uh, in this diagram to, to, to talk about well, this is this is typically uh, risk pathology of the uh, of the construction uh, of the thrombosis in lung or lower limb. <coughs> Mechanism of thrombosis COVID-19. Hematological features associated with COVID-19, prolongation of PT and PTT, elevation of the dimer, fibrinogen, and fibrin degradation products. Uh, the dimer, it's <coughs> not to say it's two or three or five or 10 uh, nanogram per liter. If we are talking about the elevation of the dimer in the, in the COVID-19, uh, it should be more than 500. To, be two, to, to say this is really, it's a, uh, maybe, maybe uh, it's a thrombus because uh, the sensitivity of DVT, uh, the sensitivity of the dimer in DVT, it's not specific. Degrees under thrombin P, it's, more, it's most important. Risk of thrombosis of COVID-19. Why estimating the risk of thrombosis of COVID-19? Patients, it's important to take into consideration the severity of the disease and the location of the patient, home vis-a-vis -vis regular ward, vis-a-vis -vis ICU. That already, already without COVID-19, the patient in ICU is more, having more risk for the, to do with DVT. And the patient in the ward is more, <coughs> more risky to, to have a, uh, DVT uh, more than the patient at home. Why? The patient at home, he, he is uh, an ambulatory patient. It is well known that non-COVID ICU patients are at higher risk of VTE when compared to a regular ward patient and same applied to ICU vis-a-vis non-ICU COVID-19 patients. Patient on extracorporeal membrane oxygenator ECMO. Uh, those who not know what ECMO, ECMO is used there is two types of it, one for the uh, pulmonary issue and one for the ECO, uh, for the cardiac issue. The pulmonary issue, uh, <coughs> during the last, uh, the last year of the, of the COVID-19, we used that uh, in other facility. Uh, it's very important for the patient with the uh, pulmonary, severe pulmonary hypoxia. Uh, that's mean we use that two, uh, two cannulas, a vein and venous, one jugular and one femoral, or two both femoral. But uh, in the cardiac patient, we use that one cannula in the one cannula in the jugular vein and one cannula in the femoral vein. But this is the difference between the two things. It will really, really, really save a lot of patient during the uh, last year of the of the uh, So uh, uh, patient on extracorporeal membrane oxygenator it more and or continuous renal replacement therapy. Uh, so if the patient and the, and the ECMO, that's, that's mean there is two cannulas in his brain and artery, so two veins and one artery and vein. This is a risky patient for different thrombosis. And patient uh, with the uh, central line <coughs> or uh, thermicat uh, uh, placement or uh, temporary line placement for, for renal dialysis, also there is a risky patient for different uh, thrombosis. So placement, replacement therapy, CRT, are at higher risk of thrombosis due to increased inflammatory processes. As mentioned before, the mechanism is pro-inflammatory and inflammatory, okay? This is the high risk of the, of the thrombosis. Risk factor, <coughs> this is important risk factor. Male, young, male, it's more than the female. Older age, more than 75 years. Obesity. Uh, more uh, equal 30 kilo per meter square, severity of COVID-19, higher risk with ICU patient, higher D dimer levels, more than 500 nanogram per milliliter, presence of hypoxia, presence of central venous catharism, as mentioned, as I mentioned before, history of cardiovascular, uh, history of cardiovascular disease, particularly, particularly uh, myocardial infection or coronary, coronary artery disease. Of course, the patient will uh, complete with rest or uh, myocardial infarction. Uh, I talk about the particular myocardial infarction if it's having less than one month, starting from this infection of the uh, pulmonary embolism, <coughs> deep venous thrombosis and pulmonary embolism, and this is COVID-19 complication. Multiple core studies shown low incidence of DVT in COVID-19 uh, patients who presented with pulmonary embolism. 
I think so, it's very clear. The patient came to the hospital, so very, very few of them already diagnosed pulmonary embolism. There is growing evidence suggesting that some pulmonary embolism are the result of insightful pulmonary uh, thrombosis rather than a classic clot replacement. I, I talked about that at the beginning. So we discovered recently uh, the patient with COVID-19 having a pulmonary embolism inside. There is, there is, that's mean. There is no defense thrombosis and the thrombus uh, dislodged from lower limb through the right atrium, from the right atrium then to the, uh, to the, to the lung. So uh, this is very important. Sometimes, yes, in my, in my experience, some patient came to me with the pulmonary embolism without any, without any cause. At that time, I didn't know why. I didn't know why. Really, I don't know why. We, uh, I looked for the all the, uh, I did for all my patients with the thrombo, thrombophilia study. Uh, some of them I found there is uh, under thrombin T low, protein S low, or uh, uh, protein C low, or sometimes fact, like the factor five mutation. But like that in situ, uh, I didn't find any answer. Now we know why. It's due to inflammation. Prevention of thrombosis and COVID-19. VTE prophylaxis, according to the 2020 Chest and American Society of Hematology 2021 guidelines for the management of VTE and COVID-19, all hospitalized COVID-19 patients should receive VTE prophylaxis regardless of the severity of the illness. The standard prophylactic doses of low molecular weight ferrin, such as inepsoferrin, preferred over the uh, unfortunate differing because this this exposure of the staff to the patient uh, and I want to tell you uh, antifreatic agents have no role to prevent the VTE before and after and in the COVID-19 in case of contraindication to, to anticoagulation use mechanical methods that means we can put on both legs a mechanical, a mechanical device inflation and deflation of the uh, of this device to just, just to ameliorate the, uh, the circulation in the lower limbs. No recommendation for, for post uh, discharge if, uh, if the patient can ambulate and has no pre existing risk factor. So the risk factor, as I mentioned, about nine, and <coughs> there is no risk factor for the patient and patient ambulate. For this reason, I told you the patient at home, no need for anticoagulation because already ambulated patient. VTE prophylaxis note from the American Society of Hematology COVID-19 Task Force, COVID-19 patient in the outpatient setting should not be received anticoagulant anti prophylaxis. We know why, because just this anti Prophylaxis should only be withheld in case of active bleeding or plated count less than 25,000. There are many of them. There are, so, sorry, many of them. Patient with atrial fibrillation, mechanical cardiac valves, like mechanical aortic or mitral valve, uh, metallic, of course, and the pre-existing of thrombotic events, patient with COVID-19 and having a poor a history of DVT, should continue their full dose of anticoagulation and only would hold if the platelet count drops to 30,000 per liter. With e prophylaxis doses, the nexoparine, the clixan or Revenox, Clixan or Revenox, it's depend on the country, the name. This is a tradition, this is a conversion name. 40 milligrams of continuous once daily. If the patient with this keratinic clearance is less than 30 milliliter uh, per minute, switch to unfractionated uh, uh, heparin. Fonta uh, Barinox, the uh, uh, extra, 2.0 milligrams of continuous once daily. Continue for the length of the hospital stay or until patient is fully ambulatory and risk of VTE has dimension. Don't use if patient, uh, if patient, don't use a patient is less than 50 kilo gram. Unfractionated heparin, 50,000 uh, international use subject to DID or TID, continue for length of the hospital stay or until patient is fully ambulatory and the risk of VTE has dimension. Continue treatment. Diagnosis uh, in 
diagnosis in the, uh, of VTE in uh, COVID-19. Routine screening is not recommended for lower extremities ultrasound is reserved to critically ill patient with a clinical suspicion of DVT. So I saw that several times in the previous hospital I was, it's systematic. All the patients could be 19 in the ICU, uh, they were did for them a uh, uh, routine uh, ultrasound to the lower limbs for the lens. In fact, it's not no need for to do that routine except the patient suspicion of the DVT. The demands little should not be the only. What's that? Yeah, should not be the only modality to decide on the therapy due to their low specificity. If pulmonary embolism is if pulmonary embolism is suspected in the presence of clinical deterioration and laboratory disturbance, so CT scan of the chest is recommended for diagnosis. Uh, actually, BTE treatment, actually, uh, patient, ill patient, low molecular weight heparin, I think so there is another one for, yes. According to the 2020 chest guidelines for the treatment for the management of BTE in COVID-19, actually ill patients, initial parenteral anticoagulation with uh, weight based low molecular weight heparin or unfractionated uh, heparin, then switch to DOA. Low molecular heparin, low molecular weight heparin is preferred over unfractionated heparin due to less staph exposure, as mentioned before, unless the patient has severe renal dysfunction. Or directly start apixipan or rivaroxipan. We know this is two products very important. Apixipan, it's that's mean the aliquas, and the rivaroxipan is the uh, it's the uh, zarelco. Uh, just inter parenthesis. Uh, two months ago was approved in the United States, uh, Rivaxipan 2.5 milligram actually, can give it for all the patients hospitalized instead of the Plexan uh, daily as a prophylaxis. It all, for all the patients in the hospitals, it's approved by FDA. So I don't know when we'll receive the, this dose 2 milligram in our countries. Actually, ill patient notes, Low molecular weight heparin is preferred over unfractionated heparin, as I mentioned, for less staph exposure unless the patient has severe renal dysfunction. Initial parenteral anticoagulation needed before before the big trunk. The big trunk that's mean the <coughs> bradaxa. Okay. We know that in Elecos and uh, and Zarelto, uh, no need to start anticoagulation parenteral anticoagulation. Uh, but by by the other way. For the Labigatran and uh, Edno uh, and Eduxipan, Edu that's mean Daxiana, unlike the Abixipan and the uh, Rivaro Xipan, uh, which can be given right away. Dawa can be administrated if there is no risk for drug interaction. Uh, yes, this is the drug interaction with Dawa. Dawa, that's mean Dawa, that's mean the. Uh, <coughs> okay. In Asian antiviral, there is three or four. Uh, uh, types of antiviral. Uh, antibiotics is macrolides and the clertomycin, well, cortisone and dexamethasone. Interaction can increase the CYP3, A4, and the uh, antibiotics can in inhibition of the C CYP3, A4. Uh, in the cortisone, uh, PGP and CYP3, A, it's induction. Indu induction, yes. Effect increase the work level in the antiviral. Uh, increase the drug level, but, but in cortisone can, <coughs> can decrease the drug level. There is no interaction with the uh, remdesivir and uh, riba uh, green. This is two, two, two agents of, uh, of antivirus. Continue. According to the, uh, to the 2020 chest guidelines for the management of VTE in COVID-19, critically increasing parental <coughs> Parental anticoagulation with the weight based low molecular heparin or Funda Parinox is preferred over unfractionated heparin with normal kidney function. The WAC are disadvantaged due to their long half life when invasive uh, procedures, 
may be required urgently and quickly deterioration cases. That's mean not all the drug, uh, the drug uh, drugs have an antidote. The only one have the antidote in the in the, in the commerce is the dabigatran, uh, and the each the ampoule for antidote it's it costs about ten thousand real, and this is exist in in Turkey also. Uh, VTE treatment doses, low mercury heparin, uh, inoxyparin, one milligram dose, one milligram per kilogram, uh, check cancer by ID. If patient uh, with, the, uh, with the renal uh, clearance, with creatine uh, clearance, is down 40 min uh, per minute, switch to, uh, to the uh, uh, unfractionated heparin. Unfractionated heparin, we can give 20 international unit per kilo, and, uh, and equal as 10,000 uh, 10, unit international, then 18 unit international per kilo per hour. Obtain uh, a PTT Q6 hour and adjust those according to the protocol. We need that uh, PTT to be 70 or more than 70 seconds. Okay. Apexifine request 10 milligram BO BID for seven days, then five milligram BO. That's seven, seven, uh, Seven days then five milligram PO uh, BID. And then administra administrator with uh, six to twelve hour after last low mercury heparin dose, administer uh, right after uh, after uh, unfractionated heparin protocol, uh, stop if PTT allows. Uh, Rivaro, uh, that's means to 15 milligram per OS PID with food for 21 days, then 20 milligram PO once daily with food. Uh, this can be uh, started to 6 to 12 hour last dose with low mercury heparin, then right after and right direct with the unfractionated heparin because unfractionated heparin it's uh, it's stay in the body four hours. Okay, uh, so. As you know, the metabolism of heparin is two to four hours in the lab. Uh, the half-life, the peak half-life of the uh, low molecular heparin is five hours. So if you inject the heparin now, you can do your operation because it will, it will be work or will function after five hours. So for this reason, I mentioned this. Post-VTE management. Uh, a treatment should be maintained for a minimum of three months after initial traumatic episode can opt for DAWA if possible for more patient convenience. Patient with recurrent VTE episode, if one, if one oral anticoagulation, patient with recurrent VTE, this is most, most, most important. If one oral, if one, if on oral anticoagulation, Switch to therapeutic weight adjust low mercury heparin. If on therapeutic weight based low mercury heparin, increase dose by 25 to 30%. Okay, thank you very much. And this is my reference. Thank you, thank you. And this is my reference for this lecture. I hope <coughs> I explained uh, something can help you uh, in this topic. Uh, and I hope we will finish this era of COVID-19. But as my my um, last uh, note for me from the university in France, they said to me, "This is the, uh, this year 2022. It's it's the year of the COVID." And as I said in Arabic, the NPS. So we'll we'll continue to to have this COVID in 2022, and certainly they confirmed to me the fourth dose will be in way. Yes. Yes, what's the question? Yes. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. You can hear me? Yes, I hear. Dr. Rani Maag. Really, I enjoy the whole part of our neurologist, but really, we bring it very situation of this very important subject. 
uh, in very nice way, I really enjoy all parts of the, of the lecture. I, I, I shouldn't have a, a, a question, but I want just to uh, talk a little bit about, if you allow me to talk a little bit about CTA angiogram yes. in patients with suspected COVID. Uh, it, it's, uh, in our uh, literature, uh, really, yes, we are agree, we totally agree that the site which we call it as uh, the peripheral kind of uh, PE, which means that the P, when you do CTP, pulmonary angio, we find the PE, uh, it's in the segmental or sub, sub, sub segmental branches, not yes. rather than the central, but coming S central, central you, yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. central, central, yes, central, usually uh, uh, this lodge of uh, yeah. thrombosis, but peripheral, this, this is, is the problem, yes. So, the, the incidence in, uh, in, in PE is much higher than TBD uh, in COVID 19. Yes. This means that the, uh, this is what will be actually a little bit challenging in CDA because CD in the um, uh, CTA, so it, it shows the, uh, more of the uh, uh, central part and major segmental. However, the peripheral and the subsegmental maybe can sometimes it's not well uh, specified by the, uh, the contrast material. That's why here in, uh, in uh, Bosch Hospital we adjust a little bit the protocol so we can see more peripheral vessels. In, uh, in, uh, in our COVID-19 patient, mm -hmm. so we can discover even small thrombus that can be seen in the peripheral. So uh, in, uh, in COVID-19, um, uh, about 60% or two-thirds of patients will have peripheral kind of thrombus in the lung, which means that will be segmental of the mental branches, yes. which is going with, uh, with your, um, yeah, your nice talk about when you talk that mostly the other side is not coming from the DVD. Uh, at which case, the D-dimer, uh, at least for us, is very crucial because more than 500 uh, to 1,000, this is uh, very uh, suspicious. And many centers, even they start complete the treatment without sending the patient to the radiology department until uh, the patient become more stable yeah, yeah, yeah. or whatever. I, 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 yes, I agree. I agree with you. As I mentioned, it's not systematic to do the ultrasound of the lower limb, and not systematic to do the uh, CT scan of the chest because if you have the the signs and the symptoms and severe deterioration of the patient, and you have D dimer more than 500, in this time you can call the RDU man. Uh, sorry, the 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 radiology man and talk with him about the, uh, uh, my suspicion of uh, pulmonary embolism. Uh, I agree with you, totally agree with you. Uh, recently, this is discovered uh, pulmonary embolism in situ, and well, now we know why. It's combination of a pro-inflammatory and pro-thrombotic processes. Yes, of course. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, I really mean a lot. Looking for that your next lecture. Inshallah, inshallah. Uh, I think so. My next lecture, uh, it's depend what you need that in something uh, arterial or venous. This is very important. I think so. We facing a lot of the varicose veins in the hospital. Maybe next topic will be on the varicose vein. Okay. Thank you very much, Victor. Thank you.